Do you want to do the intro this time? Boop, 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 boop. Thank you. And with that, I welcome you back to the Tom Tim podcast, hosted oh. by me, Tim. Joined and by... I guess I'm always here. And what's your name, my good, my good sir? Uh, Tom. You know, this is the first time I've spoken to you in two weeks since the last episode. Little known fact, we aren't friends and we have no contact outside of the podcast. That is true. We're colleagues, strictly colleagues. We're forced Uh, to do this. Every time I say my good friend Tom is a lie and I'm retconning every time I've said that I am your friend. Anyway. I um, said that for good reason. West Side Gun. I think if I was a gun, I'd be East Side. Um, I think I would do better with the kind of more temperate climate in the East Side than the West Side. Um, mm. But I'm also not a gun. So I think I'd be like a Midwest gun. You'd be an emo gun. Just sort of like Chicago area. That's east side. No, it's Midwest. We're gonna have to fact check that. And feel well, that's free what they to call themselves. bully me in uh in the in post um if I'm Well wrong. anyway, West anyway. Side Gun. I found out about this dude I think it was twenty years ago. Twenty seventeen oh, okay. when he dropped some tracks with MF Doom. Yeah. Yeah, and as as a very strange reviewing couple said, not anyone gets to go on a track with MF Doom. Um, yeah, so that's actually pretty damn impressive. And I read um, somewhere, I think it was in The Wire, actually, that um, they hooked it up by um, Doom just met them at a petrol station after a Are you serious? Show. Yeah. <laughs> What? Didn't even know he was a rapper. Yeah, I guess he, he, must have he was like, oh, I like your stuff. We should work together. Oh my god. Damn. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, um, you know, Doom what? always keeps his ear to the streets. Doom is, Doom is a bit of a uh, an enigma. He's a, he's a very talented guy, but a very strange, strange artist. Um... Okay, yeah, so, oh, I mean, if any of you know MF Doom, then you'll know what kind of clout that would bring you. Um, for those who don't know, MF Doom is probably the most famous underground rapper of all time. Um, he seems to have always been here, just, like, producing and, like, rapping just some of the craziest bars you've ever heard. He is he's famous for his very funny, just almost absurd rhyming that he does. And uh, he doesn't like to. Well, yeah, he just he doesn't rap normal things that you would hear. Um, just yeah, listen to Doomsday if you want like a, a good kind of basic opener. And uh, yeah, I, I we both highly. Or recommend anything it. he dropped in two thousand and four. Yeah, he's been around forever. Um, but okay, yeah. So that's that's very impressive. And talking of. An underground rapper like in Westside Gun being one, there is distinctly this underground vibe to this. It is very similar to the plugs I met sonically, I would say. Um, well, they are they're label mates. I think um, Benny is probably the most talented, in my opinion. But Westside Gun, it, he's definitely the most prolific. I think I prefer Westside Gun to Benny the Butcher, if I'm honest. Oh, really? I, think, I, I prefer how I think Westside Gun's a bit more abstract and he's a bit more out there. Benny the Butcher seems very like cut and dry and like like you know he gets the job done. Whereas Westside Gun has a bit more flourish. I mean, just look at the uh the I mean just take the album cover, for instance. I mean, not that he did that, Virgil Abloh did that, but um if you I mean you will have seen the album cover, you've seen the thumbnail to this video, and it is <laughs> they've put Westside Gun's chains on the Carvaggio painting of David holding Goliath's head. And um, that's that's big dick energy. It's I I I now found out the name of the original, and I have the like I just I love the original. It's my my desktop background. If you wanted to know, 
Uh, but yeah, it's it's a pretty damn dope uh, album cover for a pretty damn dope album. With these, it has it's flourished to it. It has a lot of amazing uh, features on it. The feature list is crazy. So much clout there. Um, we've got Tyler the Creator, Joey Badass. Uh, Where the hell has he been, by the way? Hmm. Where's Joey Joe Badass. Badass been? I've not heard of verse. Joey Badass dipped. He he just yeah. made a great album and dipped. Hey. Well, he made a great album, made another album, made another great album, and then dipped. Um, but yeah, it has a crazy feature list. I I mean, yeah, I forgot to mention uh, Freddie Gibbs, Rock Marciano, uh, uh, among others. There is a huge, huge list. And on the production, uh, we have Alan the Chemist, uh, Tyler the Creator, and you, you, you always know more about the producers than I do, Tom. So I'm sure you can. Well, the album kicks off with like a clip from an auction yes. Yes. of a of a Da Vinci painting mm-hmm. selling for, as the title says, four hundred million plus tax dollars, and it, it set the world record for the most expensive painting I think ever. It was a. Uh, it was very cool. Is there anything that costs more than that in any genre? I, I don't know. I don't know, Tom. <laughs> but it's absolutely mad, and it, it sets the album up really well because it is. I just want to say, um, just it has. It's this. The album kind of mixes together. It has this inescapable grittiness with regards to the kind of underground instrumentals and the ad lib of like a machine gun that Westside Gun does all over the thing. And I mean, with it being it's a rap a album, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's his trademark. But um, you have this grittiness clashing with like references and almost like an obsession with like high fashion, high art, mm. high whole couture like that kind of high level kind of higher society stuff mixing with like this very gritty vibe and as it's a very interesting kind of juxtaposition going he on. has a he has a mixtape series called hitler wears hermes which i think sort of called what hitler wears hermes which i think sort of <laughs> showcases that uh that sort of balance of luxury and grit yeah yeah, but we got the um. Then it goes in almost seamlessly into the opening track, "No Vacancy." Yes, yes. Blissful production from DJ Mugs of um. Oh, Cypress Hill. Oh my God! Damn. Okay, the feature list grows, grows. It just grows and it grows and it grows. So he does lovely pianos. The first thing he says on his own album is "Bonjour, welcome." <laughs> And then he starts making his gun noises, and then yeah. he goes into this, uh, into this sort of drug dealer lifestyle. I th- I really like the line uh, where he said that um, we shout bingo when my shooter hits four people. <laughs> yeah, words to that effect. Yeah, uh, a... and I just I thought this was a pretty good opening. It was quite short though; it was a little on the a little on the short side. I think it's short and sweet. I think it is to its advantage. Yeah. A lot of the tracks are short on here. And the only ones which are really like longer in my that really stand out to me right now are the ones with this huge feature list on them. Yeah, the um, ones with multiple features. Like three twenty seven and Or the next track. George Bondo. Yes. Oh, George Bondo feels very old school. Very old school. Like I was almost getting kind of Wu-Tang from those pianos the, um, on it. He's the um, sort of Griselda in-house producer, Darringer. Oh, okay. He's a bit of a he's like an alchemist understudy. And those sort of like crazy pianos are his thing. But that line is mad. And it is Griselda's the label? Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. it's him, uh, Benny the Butcher and Conway the Machine who are all on this song and Allah sent me. Hmm. And uh, I really liked this song. I thought the pianos were crazy. Yeah, the pianos really are mad. 
they already win the song. All the verses are good, but I really liked. Uh, I thought Benny the Butcher at the back end had the best verse, and he sort of just he signs off the whole song by saying, "She sucked fuck count up and still annoying." <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it just is very gritty. It's it's very it's. It's like there's a lot of kind of boom bappy instrumentals on this as well. It feels like it's like much like the plugs I met was kind of harkening back to earlier days of hip hop to kind of gangster rap again. Um, then you've got sort of weirder tracks like Eurostep, which is like a really distorted, bassy. Yes. Boom yeah. bap. It's like a something like, it's like futuristic boom bap. Yeah. And then I it makes. Makes Westside Gun rap a bit faster than he usually does as well, which is a nice change of pace. Yeah, it's a, one of the more abstract samples on this project, and it has a it adds like a, a nice, a welcome darker edge to it if it can get darker. Um, yeah, it's, it, it it seems like something I would expect El Sweatshirt to be rapping over, just with how kind of abstract it is. Um, reminded me a lot of one of the it was it was just seemed like something out of feet of clay or something um but at the same time it's having some of these more gangster uh instrumentals we have some dreamier ones uh more kind of contemporary sounding ones as well uh ones which come to my mind are versace and claire clairbon kick uh which gave me a distinctly like 444 kind of sound with the uh, like that amazing jay-z album which i've been listening to non-stop since it came on spotify um but yeah uh you were telling me that they you found that they sounded a bit dreamy and uh, i think that really just hits the nail on the head they have these really nice dreamy gospel kind of gospel samples over them and uh um, well, yeah global kicks is like a it's like a weird dream state uh, the alchemist yeah. sort of gives us this very almost it feels like it's a bit distant the vocal sample the mm. only issue I have with that song is that uh, Westside's Gun's voice is pitched right down and it just sounds kind of goofy okay and then Baldy James as a rapper doesn't really do much for me so yeah I've sort of met on this song it's definitely not one of the one one of the best ones the better ones are definitely kind of early on in the album um, 327 I'm going to say it, it's like one of the best songs on that sounded like a tribe it. instrumental didn't you? I thought yeah 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 well kind of it was also like more lo-fi than a lot of the other ones um, which I thought was interesting it was it was very kind of lo-fi hip hop but would you would you care to just read out the feature list on 327 I mean we got a very unlikely trio of Obviously, Gun with Joey Badass and Tyler the Creator. Yeah, that's. I just kind of crazy. I never thought I'd expect to to see that. And there's like a nice, nice hook on this one as well. I forgot to note down who delivered that, but it was a good little addition. I thought it was Joey Badass at first. I think actually Joey Badass is on the hook. On that. No, I, I genius that he isn't. It's someone else. Ah, oh, frick. But um, it does sound a bit like him. But um, I loved Joey's line where he said, they don't want smoke, they want marijuana. Didn't he oh. say, uh, and it's like, I used to get kicked out of the classroom for the aroma, something like that. Yeah, I think that was like yeah. the next line. And um, uh, I like Tyler's verse a bit as well. It was a bit more braggy than usual. I think mm. he felt that way because obviously that's sort of West Side Gun's vibe. But he had like, he started off that his before he started his verse, he was like, everybody say, yeah. And he got like that quiet thing. And then it sort of came in in the middle of his verse. And I thought that was a nice little addition. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, overall, I'm not, I like the song, but I'm not sure they worked together that well. Yeah, definitely. I think they, they, they have different vibes. I can definitely see Joey on it. Um, Joey Badass originally started as a, as an underground rapper as well. Um, and he also like had, that. Well, yeah, I guess he still is. Well, I mean, America's Most Wanted was pretty big and does, didn't really have the underground sound. And he's also an actor now as well. He's in really good in Mr. Robot. 
Uh, Actually, he was in the Chanel advert. Yeah, he's not quite so underground anymore at all. But like, on his first project, his debut project, nineteen ninety nine, he had MF Doom on it as well. And uh, well, those beats were all from M Food, I think. Really? Yeah, he redid them. Oh, I didn't know that. But to be fair, I've never listened to M Food. I Dude, you're that. playing. You're I guess playing. I am playing. I am playing. But um, Allah sent me. Is my least favorite. Track. Give an awful chorus. I hate the chorus so much. It's because Gun has like one of his kind of trademark seems to be he whines a lot, and most of the time it, it he works. does this on a. It, yeah, but on this song and uh, it's French so toast, grating. Oh, French, French toast is really well. annoying. Yeah, it's really annoying, and also French toast has such a boring like derivative chord progression which is just i don't know it's just like it sounded like soul 101 it was just it did nothing for me i don't know the feature wale is another rapper that doesn't really do anything for me no this french toast uh not good but one that is good is 500 ounces just sorry on um uh i i didn't think Allah semi was a total dud I liked the the line is about the Burberry London covering the Russians, and also um, Ben the Butcher said he's as sacred as a chapel. <laughs> For some reason, I doubt that. Um, but okay, I mean, the only thing it was just the whining just really just was at the, the forefront of my mind. I couldn't find yeah. much to appreciate in the song as a result of that. I totally see that. I think um, the fact that it's the first thing you hear in the song as well. Yeah, does not get off to the best start. But 500 ounces, though. 500 ounces. Um, I just want to... I'm going to kick it off with a... Doll. This has... This has... Freddie Gibbs on it. Um, and Rock Marciano. And uh, they feature over... The instrumental, which has the most swag... On the entire project. There is, is a lot such... going on. It is a crazy, crazy, crazy instrumental. And uh, the part I particularly love and want to make a note of on said instrumental is the use of strings on it. And, I mean, you don't really get that that much in hip-hop. Um, just use the, like, violins and cellos and whatnot. And it's a really nice number that they have going in, which just kind of just is a nice accent to the to the sample so uh yeah it's i think a the best bit of, swag man. i mean freddy's verse is great and so is rocks but there's a bit in the middle because you know the instrumental it's like there's this horn hit and then there's like this a uh, bit of singing and there's almost this like uh sex gruntings as well a bit of all, <laughs> like sampled there and uh it, after freddy's verse he uh, impersonates the um the gruntings for a bit before I did um, not get that I'm before uh, it, before yeah. rock marciano has like this little bit of singing before his verse. That that for oh, me then, was. It's like you ain't gotta after... go home, but you gotta go. And then he starts rapping, and it's like, it was weird because his voice is usually so cold and dark. Yeah. But the the only thing for me is that Westside Gun put himself at the end of the song, mm-hmm. and it was kind of done before he started. <laughs> I think. Yeah. That was a misstep on his part. Yeah, he should have put himself at the front or in between them. But um, I remember the, there's a lot of funny stuff is happening with these interludes, which I don't think they're classed as interludes. I think they are just parts of songs. There's one part at the start where there's these two guys um, doing a, an a cappella kind of rap. One of them I is... found that really annoying. Is it is really annoying, but it's there's it's nothing I funny. hate more than when they put skits on the song. I like skits. I like skits. You can't skip them. Oh no, you know skits should be separate, like interludes. But I love skits in albums. Uh, that's that's one. And then uh, after someone is singing on the song, it could be this at the end of 500 ounces. Um, what happens next is either at the end of the song or the start of the next one is there are these two. Um, two samples from a Smackdown versus Raw, like WWE episodes at various points. And it's this guy kind of shouting down the mic saying, now I may not be much of a singer, 
but I am something. He says something, but uh, it's just it's just him kind of being self aware. Like the singing may not be the best, but uh, you're not here for singing anyway, are you? So it was just kind of funny and braggadocious, and owning it. So I yeah, I, was he's, I think his biggest niche, Westside Gun, is that he raps about wrestling quite a lot. I did not know that, but I I thought it was pretty weird that there were these WWE samples on it. Like, like you that's... got um the track the DJ Premier track uh Sean versus Flair. Just randomly name that after. Oh a my god! Yeah, match. yeah. Ric Flair, the wrestler. I should have seen that coming. I was wondering where I recognised that from. But um, then we got the so this is sort of like the first half of the album is these like pianos. Yeah. And then we got um. Well, I it's kind of tricky because the. The song we just mentioned, five hundred dollar ounces, is very mm. very sample driven. But then we got Versace, which is the beautiful mixture of both. It's got this tight vocal sample, but it's also got these really nice pianos. And then from the rest of the album, yeah, is more the sample samples driven. Yeah, which is my favorite kind of hip hop production, if I'm being honest. It's very kind of Kanye e. Kanye um, Madlib are the and Jay Diller are like the masters yeah. of it. But Alchemist yeah. does it very well as well, though I have to say. We love Alan. We love Alan. We do love Alan. And uh, I really um, like the. Um, oh, one thing that this album was missing, I think, was Ashton Bronson. He would have worked this very well. On the Versace, uh, there was sort of the only real sort of emotional bits, like when he was talking about being in jail. But there was also the nice line, uh, everybody's got to go one day, but you're going sooner. Oof. That was mm. cool. Uh, Did you yeah. like Sean versus Flair, actually, as we... Um, I don't have much on it, but I do remember it being another one of the more uh, boom bappy kind of ones um dj premier sort of it's had its classic scratches all over it, it had the oh prodigy and five dog samples on there both i i didn't know <laughs> <It's like laughs> tight. oh my tight. god then, but um yeah there's only like one song i had a problem with and that was that was uh french toast no uh no i had a problem with french toast and i had a problem with alice and me uh, sorry, two songs I had a problem with. Yeah. So Party of Pop Smoke. Uh, it was oh. sort of a... Yeah. Tyler the Creator instrumental. He sort of which brought I this... I not think was Tyler at all. It was very kanye which given that he's a big influence, mm. makes a lot of sense. It was sort of his attempt at boom bap almost, but obviously had that really well chopped up vocal sample. Yeah, and the only issue I have is why on earth would you not put a second verse on this? Well, I mean, it happens sometimes. They just have a great sample and they just don't know what to say after. But then, like some of my favorite then songs, you've got to let have, it play they, out. They, yeah, they just let it play out for like an extra minute. Like take uh, other fish, for instance. The the outro is just like a minute and a half of them just playing the sample because it's so good. It is so good. Um, I really like the outro on Party With Pop Smoke, though. I really like Keisha Plum's feature where she just, she reads out this kind I of, think it's kind this, of ridiculous. This disturbing poem. Um, I like it. It's it's just, it's weird. It's very weird. And I love, I love the weirdness. I love, I love that kind of, it seems like Westside Gun just brings that element of weirdness to the old school cool kind of vibe and um he just seems more esoteric than benny the butcher benny the butcher does a good job and i'm not saying he's bad but he, he does something different I and see what you mean. is more inherently esoteric i'd say if you just look at a photo of him like the guy wears a grill all the time he's like hanging out in the louvre and just, just, I don't know, it seems to be obsessed yeah, he, with high fashion and high he, art. He wears, like, designer stuff with uh, balaclavas on. Yeah, yeah. He's a very esoteric gentleman. Um, the final track, uh, Ellie... 
Chaliba. Uh, named after yeah. some a like a West African restaurant in Paris. Case in point, just very esoteric. Um, <laughs> now, I for me, this was my favorite instrument of the whole album. Okay. I just thought the um, the sample flip was amazing. Yeah, and th- this time he did let it play out at the end of the instrumental, over because yeah. uh, like basically the last thing he says is a uh, something like oh, I'm gonna kill you and then get the guy to tap dance over you and it's just these tap dancing noises. Mm. But also the the line about uh, being on Vogue, just me and my stove, it's pretty tight. <laughs> and doesn't um, it's. Does he have his daughter say like yeah in between at the think, end yeah that was the end of party of pop smoke ah rest in peace the woo yeah woo back yeah. Wednesday getting shot in your own home that's got to... that sucks but yeah, overall I was I mean I had listened to Fly God is an awesome god before and I quite liked that but um, I wasn't I, really this is huge... the first time I'd heard gun a huge fan other than that but this is probably the best album i've heard this year thus far oh that's a big claim my man that's a very big i liked it very much i don't i have to get back on whether or not i think new albums i think i think i'll probably be bumping this more than i i bump king cruel so i'm i might have to second that i think this could be my favorite album to come out this year as well um, Nothing is. Re- this is the first one that I've just been playing constantly, and I've had to stop myself yeah. from listening to it multiple times a day just because I don't want it to get old. Yeah, and it, I just I really love the sentiment of the album. I love the vibe of it. I love how it has these old school beats, and they are trying to bring that back and move away from the more synthesized trap aesthetic i and think that's I why just, they've been love, blowing up so much yeah because it is just such a diluted sound and um I, I i really am a huge fan of just this very strange absurd obsession with high class that he has and i, I love that mix he t- just brings it down from like the either he's looking up to this high high society kind of these labels this art this uh, lifestyle and he seems obsessed with it but at the same time he's kind of making it more kind of egalitarian he's bringing it down to the grit of these old school boom bap sounds uh i just i just love that mix it is just such a good juxtaposition these things should not mix and they do like uh, I mean that in the sense of like the music and the vibes, like they, it just seems so diametrically opposed, and yet they they work so well together. I really am a huge fan of that. Um, but the two songs which I didn't like are fucking shit, in my opinion. So I think only French Toast was awful, and even then mm. I thought the R and B singer uh killed it. Hmm. She did her thing, but like that's the only one I'd say was unlistenable. Mm. Even well, you know, the R&B singer was was very good on that. And it was nice because the singing before that was terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. I think uh, it was after that one. There's there's a sample of like I may not be a singer. <laughs> I mean that would fit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, so I think there are some songs like it's not perfect, and I think all no. the skits are really annoying. I I have to disagree with you there, but so, uh, I especially think the, the Million Dollar Man point. one, that one really. I think that was another Actually, wrestling yeah. reference, but that one yeah, really yeah. annoyed me, and it was really long as well. It's so long, two minutes. so long. Yeah, they should just be individual skits, so you can just skip them. Yeah, but anyway, I think it's a strong eight for me. I think it's a between a seven and an eight. It's it's securely a seven, but uh, depending on my mood, and like if I ignore those, the fact that you can't skip the skits, and I ignore the whining 
on a if I ignore some things, it's an eight. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it's definitely a very very good album, worth your time because it you are not gonna have heard anything like this to have come out in the past. Well, besides Benny the Butcher, of course, in the past, like or any of his old stuff. <laughs> yeah, in in the past, like year. So they basically cornered the market. Oh, the, big this time sort of stuff. I'm hoping that Griselda is going to get some more traction and some more people. Some more. Well, art. they got like Wu Tang been co-signing them for a little bit. That's very good. Although I want to hear him on some Rizzo beats, like you said, that some of the songs sounded a bit like. Yeah. That Ten. to hear him actually on some Riz stuff would be pretty cool. It'd be very very. Cool. Like he had he had Madlib on his last album, so they're getting. They're getting recognition, and that makes sense. Like if yeah, if Freddie's and the uh, like, they they do just have like some of the some of the better underground, some of the best underground rappers actually on this. Freddie mm. Gibbs, Joey Badass, um, need some Earl. Yeah, I I really wanted Earl on Eurostep. I really wanted Earl on him on that. Uh, I think he would have been great. And like Action Bronson, why why aren't they why aren't they all doing something together? They really should. They really, really should. But then again, Earl's stuff is a lot more cerebral. Um, you know, you can't you can't put that on. It'll scare the hose, as the meme goes. Whereas you could put this on, and I think anyone would think, like, yeah, I'm vibing. Yeah, well. We got a yeah. couple of singles to... Yeah, we do. Close this week out. Which we'll uh, go over pretty quick. Where do you want to start? Uh, shall we move from some gritty uh, gangster rap to Charlie XCX, some delightful, absurd pop forever? Sure. It's very quirky, abstract, yeah, undeniably poppy. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't watched the music video, it seems like she's just got a bunch of people sending videos of them lip syncing to the song and just showing things. And it's just, it's very, very wholesome, very nice. Well, in a um, time where a lot of people have pushed back their release dates, for um like touring etc uh due to covid19 charlie is choosingly making an album in quarantine that's epic and uh, this is the first single she just dropped another one yesterday i think with yeah. uh, one of the guys from 100 gex on production Ooh. so that's worth a listen as well but this one like the instrument is crazy it's sort of washy at times Mm. It feels like it's washing over you. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. Mm. And they're yeah, sort probably. of just speaking lyrically on a long distance relationship. Yes, yes. And um, I just want to say like, 100 Gex is such a good pairing for Charlie XCX. Such a good like producer pairing. Well, that instrumental is even more crazy. That track's called Claws. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna listen to that. Oh my god, yeah, I love 100 Gex. I love 100 Gex so much. They're so they're so weird. They're, but they they also have this kind of bubblegum sheen to their music. It's very like very poppy, but very very weird. Very weird. So so goddamn weird. Um, yeah, I think I mean, that's, it's good. It's a it's a solid single, uh, and we we highly highly recommend that you check it out. Well, we love Charlie. Charlie. We do love Charlie. This is, I think, I think we have a good mix of underground hip hop and almost mainstream pop. You know, uh, different different vibes, different crowds, but the same us and the same opinions. That's our market that we've cornered. A very okay. vague one. I think um, we'll go for uh, the slightly longer hiatus. Uh, is there a shard? Yeah. Why worry? It's a good question. Why worry? He Do he made it's... it explicit that uh, this is just a Lucy. This has nothing to do with mm-hmm. his album that he's working on. Oh, okay. I thought it was. And it may may never come. <laughs> really? Because he's been it. he's been like leaking stuff and working on it for like three years. Oh. But oh. this is a production from Crooklyn. I thought it was really soulful and really nice. It was very soulful, very old school. It all, it really comes to life on the hook with these horns come in. Yeah. And uh, Zay asking, where the funk at? Follow and me. It has just some very rich production. And um, although, 
at the same time, the rich production is on the instrumental, whereas there is almost a lo-fi effect on the vocals, which I I very appreciated. But considering this is a Lucy, he's like, it's like it's gone straight to the top of the iTunes charts and stuff. Because mm. people have been wanting new Isaiah Shire music for a long time. Oh yeah, big time, big time. Like the Sun's he tirade came out. Sun's in... tirade dipped. In Before September 2016. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Uh, so that was uh, that was part that was of thing. this TDE week that we had. They dropped some tracks every day. We were only mm-hmm. doing the ones that we liked. I thought the Sir one was okay, but the the rest I'd I'd miss. Mm. But uh, it kicked off with this freestyle from Absol, Solo Ho, The Prophecy. And it, yeah. I mean, he got he got his bars off. Oh yeah, big time, big big <sighs> big time. It I is mean, so it, badass. This the first half again. It's got some lovely horns. Yep. I'm gonna let the beat build and do some demolition. What? <laughs> he does demolition big time. Started from the bottom like a square root. <laughs> <laughs> My girl built like she from a stable. It's great. It's great. I'm the sickest with it. You just a common cold. I've just been bumping more Absol since. Bars. And, uh, I realized I never really had before. But uh, it's pretty, pretty great. See, his, uh, his, his height is slightly shorter. He dropped his last album in December 2016. <laughs> Instead of September. So they both... Oh my god. What like, a difference. I can't believe he's still... Three months, mate. Like he's like his his soulmate died. Oh jeez. And he was still making albums, and I just can't see why that. I don't know, man. Mm. But then uh, he did a little, little shout out to Matt Miller as well in the start of the second half. Just mm-hmm. everyone misses that guy, man. Yeah, we just I'm learning more and more of how much of an impact he's had on the scene. Like my favorite Absol album these days. Was like ninety nine percent recorded in Matt Miller's house. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. There's um, I, I want to talk about. I don't really know how much to talk about it, but I just want to mention. You were saying the second half. This this track has an excellent beat switch on it, and uh, it's very very cool. Very clean. Great production. It feels just just really really well put together. Yeah, so I was trying to look for like other beats that the the producer had made, but according to Genius, this is his only song he's ever produced, which is strange. That's mad. That's <laughs> mad. That's that's not true. That's not true. It could be an alias. Maybe because this is too polished for someone's first ever beat that has been on a song. Maybe it got Unless mixed by. Been... Maybe it got the... mixed really well. Yeah, or maybe they they just live inside a door. And uh, that's all they do, make beats. But uh, I think that rounds us off for this week. Um, we do hope that you are staying safe and you're staying away from the big man COVID. Um, yeah, just maintain your social distancing, kids. And, uh, hey, listen safe. to listen to us. You got nothing better to do. <laughs> Yes, listen to us because you have literally nothing better to do. Not because you like our content. No, 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 no. Or eight of you who watched. That shouldn't come into it. It can, shouldn't even cross your mind. Um, but yeah, okie dokie. Uh, I've been... What is my name anymore? I don't know. I don't know, been... but we miss you, Zay. Yeah, we miss you, Zay. Please, please drop the album. It sounds very soulful. Uh, Arrivederci. Au revoir.